Good afternoon, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of May, 2023. It is 12.43 p.m. here in Australia. I hope you're all very well and all blessed. Um, I'm going to jump on today and do a video. I was going to post this last night, but I was studying up until nearly midnight. And I thought if I do a video now, I'll be up until 3 a.m. in the morning. So um, I had to go do a few things this morning and now I'm ready to do this. And I'm really excited because the day counts are so exciting and just so very encouraging. So I'm going to jump straight into it. So remember yesterday's video that I did, <clears throat> I was showing you how um, in Ethiopia, they're actually seven to eight years behind on our calendar. So they're actually in the year 2015. And uh, we, you know, I was reading the some date facts and time facts, and it just makes so much more sense. They have two 12 hour um, time periods in the day. So from dusk to dawn, uh, sorry, from dawn to dusk and from dusk until dawn again, which makes more, you know, it makes more complete sense. Like Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? And um, basically their New Year's is September 11, which is, you know, highly significant because many people um, who have really researched it can show that that's actually the true birthday of Christ. Um, so, so many cool things. But what I wanted to talk about in today's video is I was asking everybody, you know, is there anything significant that happened in 2015? And I said I was going to go back and have a look at some rapture videos and and everything like that that people had made in 2015 to try and get some puzzle pieces. And wow, <laughs> Father God is so good. You know, he drops these things in your spirit. You haven't thought about them for years and then boom, you think about them and there's a good reason that you do. So as I was going through and looking at uh, rapture videos and whatnot, um, I came across a couple right before I was about to turn the computer off I found this um, this rapture video by Bob Barker and um, it was in 2015 talking about September 23rd 2015 and straight away the memory flooded back that was my very first high watch date and I mean more high watch than I ever have had in the in, in you know afterwards because I literally printed out hundreds if not thousands of pieces of paper with telling people and leaving them all around um, you know where I was living at the time telling them that the rapture was going to happen that you know the blood moons and everything and that September 23 2015 was the day and um and i remember that because i know that i baptized my two boys in the ocean just prior to september 23rd and uh and so i really remember that and anyway i'm sure you guys if you can remember that that was absolutely huge it was coming towards the last blood moon tetrads of that um, tetrad series of 2014-2015 and also in 2014, when I first was made aware of the Blood Moon Tetrads, that is literally the first time I have ever heard of a rapture. I didn't know what that was before growing up in the um, Seven Day Adventist Church. Um, they never talk about a rapture. You know, it was, you've got to go get your head cut off, whatever, all the way to the end. And then, um, you know, and then I started getting YouTube and starting seeing other people's, um, you know, videos and things like that. And I'm like, what is this rapture? This sounds awesome. And that started my whole journey. And so September 23rd, 2015, that was a very, very special day for me. And um, it was the beginning of a very long journey, as we can all attest to, that we're still standing here to this day still looking up and um, looking for our great redemption so with that being said brothers and sisters that's a very high significant mark and the fact that that's like eight years ago or you know seven and a half years ago now but um, coming up to the eighth year the eighth day 
it's very significant so what I'm going to do today is um, my study that I did last night I just basically you know cut paste and wrote about it and I'm just going to read it to you as I've written it so basically I was doing more day counts and I thought about it and I thought I'm going to do because you know everybody knows from my last couple of videos my la I said that my last high watch date that I was going to talk about was May 19th and the reason that's so special to me May 19th was because um, one I've shown you via the calendar that Father God has shown me for the past year that the full abundant moons are indeed the first day of each month and us having the two blood moons in May and November of 2022 that showed us what was the first month and the seventh month and long story short the calculation came to be on the 5th of May on that big abundant full moon that was truly the first day of the first month that was the first of Nissan okay on that full moon on the 5th of May this year so with that being said that means uh, 14 days at evening or 15 days later would be the 19th of May on the dark concealed moon so that is my I don't want to say prediction because people love to use that word but that is my understanding of what father has shown me via the calendar and as you've seen from my previous videos I have shown and proven it to you via the 177 counting system uh, you know three four five years worth of it so you know you can't go wrong with it and the second reason why May 19th actually there's three reasons the second reason why May 19th is so prominent in my mind is because last year in 2022 I had my one and only rapture dream ever and for someone who loves the rapture so much which encompasses their whole life it's very strange but also very significant that I've only ever had one rapture dream and that happened to be on May 19th of 2022 now I don't know if father was showing me the date I don't know you know we can't know these things but it's always been in my mind and it was the one and only dream I wrote down I don't write dreams and journals and stuff like that I've had a lot of tribulation dreams running for my life and scary type dreams and you know throughout my life but I don't write them down if they're significant enough father lets me remember them but um, I will always remember May 19th 2022 having this rapture dream and it was on a Thursday too which a lot of people have said the rapture was going to happen on a Thursday this year I think May 19th is on a Friday I believe yeah on a Friday which makes sense too because it says pray your flight is not on the Sabbath okay so if it happens here in Australia on the Friday you know um, it could happen in the evening whatever I don't know who knows but anyway let's just stick on track here so the reason I've put in the day count here for the 21st which is three days later was because I, I, I'm weighing up what's like they're both equally as important okay because you can't have one without the other but what's what are we looking at here we're we looking at the death of when Yeshua Jesus Christ took his last breath okay at Passover on the cross or are we going to be looking at resurrection day which I, I truly believe that's that's the key is the three days later when he was uh, resurrected from his father he was risen from his father out of the grave and in defeating death right and that was three days later um, so that's why I have the 21st of May 2023 so I thought okay and that also happens to be even though I believe that the full moon the full abundant moon is the first day of the month I don't know if father's going on the Jews calendar because they're you know the the Israelites are his people so he's going to be using their way of life right um, so the 21st happens to be the first slither of the moon as well and they all will they will be going into the first day of the third month with which is Savan okay and that is the month that Shavuot is in 
like Pentecost. So very significant that the 21st of May 2023, for me, it'll be the 17th of Nisan, Resurrection Day. On the Jews calendar, it'll be the first day of the third month, Sivan, okay, the month that the um, Pentecost Shavuot Feast of Weeks is in. So, so I take this date, the 21st of May 2023, and I subtract the 75 days. Now, the reason I wrote 75 days here, brothers and sisters, is from Daniel 12, where it says, um, you know, the abomination is going to be set up. Then there's going to be 1,290 days. Uh, blessed is he who waits to the 1,335 days. So I'm like, okay, a year, uh, sorry, three years, right? Three and a half, sorry, three and a half years is 1,260 days. So I'm, I know that the Antichrist, he's going to rule and reign hardcore for 42 months or three and a half years, right? So I'm going to start from 1,260 days. And what is, what is the difference between 1,260 and the 1,335 days? That is 75 days in between. That's why I've got the 75 days there, okay? So I'm thinking to myself, something happened something could happen 75 days before the 21st of may 2023 which i believe is a, is resurrection day and on the jews calendar it is the first day of the third month so i'm subtracting 75 days from that and it lands on the 7th of march 2023 on the jews pass up uh, jews Pyram. that is so significant brothers and sisters the fact that it lands on the Jews' Pyram, this is why it's so significant. Because exactly three years prior, on the 11th of March, 2020, the you-know-what was announced to the entire world. And that has to be a marker. Okay, because the rule of the enemy is they have to tell us what they're doing. They can't do anything under the shadows because it wouldn't be fair. It's not just. Satan has to obey by those rules too. The enemy has to let us know what he's doing ahead of time. It's our consent and our going along with it is, you know, is where it all falls apart, basically. But he has to tell us. So this was a, a worldwide announcement of the you know what. Okay. The pandemic, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. On the 11th of March, 2020, the worldwide announcement of the you know what. And the 11th of March, 2020 was also Pyram. Now, when you read the book, and I, like Father's been drawing me to the book of Esther so much in the last three weeks, it's not funny. And, and this is why I've titled my document here it's all about Pyram it's literally all about Pyram the book of Esther was the last book to be canonized into the Old Testament okay the, well, the last books the Jews actually added to their to the Tanakh okay um, and the book of Esther is also uh, I think it is if I'm not mistaken, it's the 19th, oh my goodness, that I'm going to have to check, because if it's the 19th book, that's amazing, that's amazing, I don't know, I, I'm, actually I'm going to have a look, okay, it's the 17th book of the Bible, that's equally as amazing, because the 17th is what I was talking about here, the 21st day of May, which happens to be the 17th of Nisan, on, on my calendar that Father's shown me, um so that's absolutely amazing so esther's the um 17th book in the bible okay so i can't remember what i was talking about but what i'm trying to say here is on the 20th of march 2020 um the you know what was announced to the world okay and that was also on Pyram. and Pyram being in the book of esther um we can see it's the only book in the bible that doesn't mention the word god okay it's like god is hidden and pardon me and basically that's exactly what he's going to do 
is soon his voice will not be heard okay so we're going to seek the lord now while he can still be found so this is amazing because Piram to me is exactly how i see this end time game playing out because the enemy has been casting lots and he has a day because if we can try and figure this out as close as we can get with our human knowledge you don't think satan's got a, a whole hep, a head step ahead of us in you know in knowing when it's pretty much time's up or when this thing's going to go down yeah, he knows he knows better than we do so basically behind the scenes him and his minions and his people who work for him um, you know with, within the spirit of the antichrist they are preparing our demise brothers and sisters without a doubt but we don't have to have fear about that he can go ahead okay because we have the glory of god over us the protection of the almighty so nothing nothing can come arrows can fly at us by day pestilence at night you know we, it says in psalms 91 we're going to see these things with our eyes nothing will touch us but what I'm trying to say is they have been planning our demise slowly but surely they have marked a day they've been casting lots and they've picked the day they know the day and it's going to be let's wipe the Christians all out in one go man woman and child okay we want to get rid of them we hate them because we want to rule this earth blah 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 okay so this is why it's all about Piram and the fact that 75 days from the 21st of May 2023, which I believe is the 17th of Nisan, lands on the 7th of March, Purim, on the Jews' calendar. And exactly three years ago, on Purim, on the 11th of March 2020, the you know what was announced to the entire world as the beginning, as the beginning time clock. So therefore, brothers and sisters, I'm bringing across to you today what I believe could possibly be the shortening of time. I believe we've been shortened of time by exactly 180 days or six months. And for the sake of the elect, Father God shortened the time and um, otherwise no flesh would survive. And could you imagine if we were here for another six months with everything that they're planning to do? And every you know turning on the 5g and it's just going to be horrid okay they everybody's everybody on the evil side is planning a depopulization of humanity of some sort of some way okay they're all in this together they want to get rid of the Christians this is going to be their um, this is what I believe the peace and safety will be okay it's going to be two things one it's happening right now the fact that everywhere around the world we're getting the oh the you know what's over it's finally over okay and then the lies saying that all the politicians and all the doctors said oh we never told you it was mandatory we didn't actually think anybody was gonna you know think that they had to do it and they're just lying to our face but what i'm trying to say is they're telling you that it's over it's officially over like recorded the same people who announced it to the world the h um, the WHO okay are the same people who say now it's officially over be careful brothers and sisters because this could this could very well be your peace and safety okay when we're like oh yeah we're gonna go to back to normal okay normal ain't coming back but Jesus is I'll tell you that much but that could be one type of your peace and safety and I believe another peace and safety is is then when the bridegroom us and not us you know the the um, the voice the candlesticks right us the one that's re representing Yeshua Jesus Christ on this earth right now who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit who are the candles on the mountain sides shining brightly whatever when we're removed Okay, that's going to be the wicked's peace and safety. And they're going to know not before the flood came and took them all away. Just like it is in the days of Noah. And speaking of Noah, somebody wrote on my comments um, about Noah. And it's, just, yes, it's absolutely so true. And this is why Yeshua Jesus Christ mentions too, as in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot. 
Brothers and sisters, do you realize that Noah knew? He may have only knew seven days beforehand, but father told him. Father said, in seven days, I'm going to make it rain. So brothers and sisters, if, if it's going to be, if the son of man's coming is going to be like the, the days of Noah, then we too are going to be told seven days beforehand. Okay, so, you know, this is absolutely amazing. So on the 14th of May, something significant might happen that we as a body of Christ, a body of watchers, a body of the wise virgins watching with our lamps full, we may have some revelation, brothers and sisters, on the 14th, giving us one week of notice. Father did promise there is nothing that I will do unless I tell you first. Nothing. And no one knew. No one knew. It was only seven days before, but he knew that within seven days it was going to rain. And everybody else didn't know until the water started dripping down. And, and remember, Noah was taken away, just like the bride is going to be taken away. And there's your false sense of peace and safety because we're no longer here on YouTube and, and um, blocking the airways, you know, and the social media platforms with our repent, repent, please. The rapture is coming. Jesus is coming back, please. That's going to be silent. And they're going to be in rejoicing, you know, they're going to be rejoicing for the fact that we're silent. And then they can go and live their debauchery lives and do whatever they want and live in sin without having any consequences for a moment. That's going to be one of your false senses of peace and safety. And then what happens? Boom! Sudden destruction. Just like the days of Noah. Okay, they knew not. As in the days of Noah before the flood, it says. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Until, you know, Noah went onto the ark and the doors were shut and they didn't know until the flood came and took them all away. So Noah went into the ark. We as a bride, as a believer in watching people, are going to be taken into the heavenly ark, which our Lord and Saviour, Yeshua Jesus Christ, has been preparing for us for the last 2,000 years, exactly like the Galilean wedding, okay? The, the, the groom would go off and he would build an extension onto the father's house preparing for his bride. When the father said, all right, son, this looks ready, go and get your bride. And the bride didn't know. She knew that the time was near, but she didn't know until she heard those trumpets and the cymbals and the loud noises and the, and the, the, um, you know, the fire and everything that they could see in the distance. And the whole neighborhood would be woken and invited to this wedding. But some went back to sleep. You know? And then the door was shut. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is pretty cool. So I've probably made a whole big thing out of that and confused you. But again, um, the reason I have the 21st of May 2023 is um, from what I believe, from my calendar that Father showed me. The abundant moons are the full first day of each month and uh, May the 5th, the, the full moon that we just had, the prenumbral lunar eclipse that we just had, was indeed the first day of the first month or the first day of Nisan. Okay, and that um, therefore making the, um, the 21st day, three days later, the 17th of Nisan, resurrection day. A very, very, very significant day. Okay, because it was that moment when the Christ was risen that that sealed our, our destiny. That sealed the victory. The victory had been won. The victory over death had been won, signed, sealed and delivered. And it was a promise for all mankind who ever wanted to believe in this. So that's a very, very special day. So that's why I've, I've chosen the 21st of May 2023 and I'm subtracting those 75 days from Daniel. Um, the, the 75 more added days on for three and a half years. Okay, so these are the days. These are the 75 days seem to be our days of trial. Okay, I think they were, they're the last remaining trial for the bride. Our trials and tribulations to finish the refining and purifying of our body and our souls and um, getting us ready 
okay this is why there's been so much spiritual attacks on all of us at the moment so so in saying that if we take those 75 days away from the 21st of may we come to the 7th of march purim and exactly three years prior to that on the 11th of march 2020 was also Purim, the announcement of the you know what to the entire world. Okay, so that's amazing. So I've just got down here exactly what I just said 21st of May 2023 minus the 75 days, which the, how I got that was the two, 1260 to 1335 days, the 75 days in between, comes to the 7th of March. 2023 Pyram. Okay, and then I just put six months and six months is one year here. Six months and six months, two years. Six months and six months, three years. Six months equals 1260 days. Okay, six, 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 seven sixes. And what's right in the midst? Okay, so then we have. Um, if we do three years of 360 days, which is a biblical year count, okay, 360 days, biblical year count, then that equals 1080 days, 1080 days, okay? That means there's a remaining 180 days left off three and a half years, okay? Because I've only done a three year count here, a three year count of 360 day biblical count equals 1080. We're missing six months still because it's the, the the prophecy is three and a half years, right? That's exactly 180 days. So the next thing we do is we have a look in the scriptures, the word of God. Where do we see 180 days? Boom, Esther. Uh, like, wow. Okay. And Esther 1.4, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the splendor of his excellent, excellent majesty for many days, 180 days in all. Okay, this was the king, the Persian king. Remember, it was the Persian, the Median the Persia, the spirit of the Median Persia that fought Yeshua Jesus Christ when he was trying to come down to Daniel in chapter uh, Daniel chapter ten. Okay, the spirit of the uh, uh, Medes and Persia, which was Satan, right? He was trying to come down and stop Yeshua Jesus Christ getting delivering the message to Daniel the prophecy about the 70 weeks and um, Michael the archangel came in and he fought for Yeshua Jesus Christ so that um, he you know he went in his place and so that Yeshua could get the message to Daniel and tell him what he needed to hear and then it says and I want to show you again because many people say oh it's the Holy Spirit that's the um, what do you call it that's the restrainer no brothers and sisters the holy spirit will still be on this earth afterwards because the seal of the living god will be on the 144,000 and messianic jews okay they are going to be the last ones that are left here they're sealed in the forehead with the seal of the living god but they are going to finish the publishing and the proclamation of the gospel to the entire world and then the end will come they have to be, they're like the two witnesses, okay? The two candlesticks that stand before the Lord of all the earth. They have the testimony, they have the commandments of God from the Old Testament and the testimony of Yeshua Jesus Christ. So they're Messianic Jews, okay? So we have a look at Daniel 10 and I'll show you. The restrainer is Michael, the archangel, brothers and sisters. It is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be given to all a lot of a lot of people that come to know him properly and have a relationship with him over the great tribulation okay um, it's the Holy Spirit still needs to be here so where are we um, King James okay so I'll just read this whole thing because it's only 21 uh, verses Okay, Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, uh, Cyrus, king of Persia, okay, just like Esther, okay, he was a Persian king. A thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar, 
And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. Okay, this is for our time, not his. And he understood the thing and he had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks, 21 days. Okay, 21 days. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah, 1st of May. Okay. Um, I ate, I'm going to have to do a day count and see what happened on the 1st of May there. Okay. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, um, as I was... Um, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekel, then I lifted up my eyes and look and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. This is Yeshua, Jesus Christ. OK, we're talking about here whose loins were girded with fire of gold of up as and his body also like the beryl and his face as the appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and feet like the color onto polished brass, and the voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled and hid themselves. Therefore I was alone, and I saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into into corruption and I retained no strength yet I heard the voice of his words and when I heard the voice of his words then I was in a deep sleep on my face and my face was towards the ground and behold a hand touched me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands and he said to me Jesus O oh, Daniel a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, from the first day, this is 21 days ago, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before thy God, Thy words were heard, and I have come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, just like Esther, withstood me one and twenty days, twenty-one days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Okay, remember, it's Michael in Daniel 12, too, that stands up. It's the fighter for our people, the defender for our people. It is Michael in Revelation 12 as well, that he is the one who stands up and has the war in heaven. Okay. Um, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. And I remained there with the king of Persia. Now I've come to make you understand what shall befall thy people in the later days. So I'm going to come and tell you so that you can understand what's going to happen to the, to the people of God in the last days. For yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words to me, I set my face towards the ground and I became dumb. And behold, one like the similitude of the Son of Man touched my lips and then I opened my mouth and spoke and said unto him that stood before me, Oh, my Lord, by the vision of my sorrows are turned upon me and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? For as for me, straight away there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of man and he strengthened me and said O man greatly beloved fear not peace be unto you be strong ye be strong and when he had spoken to me i was strengthened and said let my lord speak for thou hast strengthened me okay now listen to these last two verses and then said he knoweth thou wherefore i came unto thee so do you know where I, where I came from unto you? And now I will go and return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Geshia, 
Grecia, Grecia, sorry, shall come. But I will show thee, which is noted in the scriptures of truth, that there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. There is but none that holdeth, just like Thessalonians says, you know now who withholdeth, okay, until he lets him go. This is exactly where it's coming from, okay? And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. That is who your restrainer is, brothers and sisters. It is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will remain on this earth for those that are going to come to accept Yeshua Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour um, during the Great Tribulation. Okay, it needs to be on this earth. Okay, as a comforter, as a guide, as um, something that can bring remembrance to all the seeds that we planted to our beloved loved ones who are going to be left behind. Okay, the Holy Spirit is going to be with them. Okay, if that it, if they're going to choose to reject the Holy Spirit when they're going through and then take the mark and stuff like that, that's when there's no more Holy Spirit in that person. But that I just wanted to show you that, brothers and sisters. Okay, so. This is why it's so significant that everything seems to be pointing to Purim. Okay, so 180 days. And you know the reason why this king, this Persian king, had a, a big big feast and a big grandeur for 180 days is because when you look into the history and read about it, it was actually, he was, um, they used to have huge feasts like this because it was a preparation for an invasion of Greece. Okay, he was about he was preparing his army and that's really what it was it wasn't just a feast it was there was a reason behind it they weren't just getting drunk every day but they were actually strategizing and getting military ready because they were about to invade Greece okay so it's very interesting that Esther's you know the, the main guy here he's the prince of Persia right the king of Persia and he's about to invade Greece which we just read in Daniel 10 that um, when Yeshua had to go back and help Michael fight the Prince of Persia, he said, I'm going to have to also fight the P Prince of Grecia, which is the Prince of Peace, uh, Prince of Greece, sorry. So I hope I'm not confusing you, brothers and sisters, but this is just, this is really, and I think this is why um, our sister Mandy from Seeking Heavenly Things is continuing to get the messages about Piram because Piram seems to be where it's at that's definitely what father's showing me that Piram is is the least is the least feast that the Jews think the Messiah is going to come back on okay it's the least feast that um, most people think that the Messiah will come back on okay it's definitely a day they think not so you know who knows who knows it could be a hidden pyram let's just put it that way it could be a hidden pyram um, okay so like I said here the first slither of the moon will happen on the 21st of May which I said would be the 17th of Nissan on the true calendar right so that's the first slither of the moon we'll see on the 21st of May and on the Jewish calendar that makes it the third month okay the first day of the third month the month of Shivan which is the month of Shavuot Shavuot which is Feast of Weeks or what we call Pentecost today okay so there is one Bible result for the first day of the third month one Bible result in the whole um, Bible and it says it came to pass in the 11th year on the third month on the first day of the month that the word of the Lord came to me and I have this here how do I do this okay <laughs> so I always do this We'll copy it and we're going to go. I want to show you. Paste. 
is like I said, there's only one verse in the whole entire Bible where something happened on the first day of the third month. And I won't read all this to you, but basically I'll read just a little bit. and said, It came to pass on the 11th year in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Okay, this is all to do with Passover now, okay? And to his multitude, whom art thou like in thy greatness? Okay, behold, the Assyrians was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of high stature, and his top was among the thick brows. The water made him great. The deep set him up high with the rivers running around about his plants and sent her little rivers into all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above the trees of the field and his bows were multiplied and his branches became long because of the multitudes of water when he shot forth. I won't read that all to you, um, but Ezekiel 31, read it. It's literally about how the Pharaoh, which represents, you know, it represents Satan. It represents the wicked, the bad side, okay? Because this person was, he just thought he had the biggest stature and he exalted himself, you know, just like Lucifer tried to exalt himself above God and all this kind of stuff. And then it goes on to the bottom of it saying that he'll be cast down into hell. Okay, he'll be cast down into hell. And so that's very interesting that the one verse in the entire Bible, first day of the third month, is that Satan being cast down into hell. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So here we are, the month, the Hebrew month of Shavan, that's the third month. In the month of Shavan, uh, we celebrate the giving of the Torah on the holiday of Shavat, Shavuot. Okay, so that's when, so that's when they um, they came out of um, Egypt, right? And this was in the third month, and then basically Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. People, they were naughty. They built the golden calf, right? And then they lost three thousand people in that day. Okay, three three thousand people ended up dying. The reason they died um, was because. That golden cow or the calf that they made, father um, made Moses um, uh, melt all that gold down and the people drank it. Okay, the people drank it, they died. Okay, they died from their own God. Because okay? they wanted to make that stupid golden cow. I mean, come on, you have just seen all these wonderful things coming out of Egypt, you know, all these, the plagues and the miracles of God and then the the big 50-foot wall of water being parted, etc., etc. But anyway, so they lost 3,000 people that day. And then on Pentecost, when Yeshua ascended and 10 days later, Father gave um, the gift of the Holy Spirit okay 3,000 people were saved that day so nothing goes invalid with God he will save his own okay and so we have um, Shavuot Feast of Weeks happened and that is one of the three mandatory feasts brothers and sisters that all men had to be in Jerusalem for Passover Shavuot and Tabernacles okay so very very important so as you can see here and I think this year on the Jewish calendar, it's uh, the 26th of May and the 28th of May, okay? So, Father God gave a marriage proposal to Israel on Shavuot, and then on Pentecost, Yeshua Jesus Christ gave a marriage proposal to us, the Gentiles, okay? Very, very cool. And then uh, just something here about the meaning of the number 180. Because I remember, I think that Father's showing me that that's the shortening of the time. is six months. So we're going three years to three, uh, three years from Purim 2020 on March 11th to Purim um, March 7th, 2023. That's exactly three years. And then we have to wait those extra 75 days, as it says in Daniel. But um, so I think it looks like he's cutting off, he's shortening the time by six months. Well, I hope and pray so. 
I really hope and pray so. Okay, so the possible meaning for the number 180 is derived from the biblical history and the occurrence of a certain original language words. The word Ephraim, which is strong 669, is recorded 180 times in the Hebrew Old Testament. It is found the most in the book of the minor prophet Hosea, 37 times, followed by the book of Judges, 27 times. In the King James, it is always translated as the name Ephraim, the younger of Joseph's two sons. Ephraim is commonly used in scripture to refer to the kingdom of Israel, the northern ten tribes. Okay, Ephraim. That's what the word, that's what the number 180 means. Ephraim, okay? The kingdom of Israel. Unbelievable. And then it's just, you know, it's just some more meanings and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it talks about in, um, in Esther, you know, about the 180 days. And then I had a look where, where else in the Bible does it talk about six months or 180 days. Um, oh, just a little bit more information here. Uh, a circle contains 360 degrees. Okay, that's where we're getting the 360 biblical days, which means a half a circle is 180 degrees. Okay, that's what repent actually means. It means turn around 180 and go back the other way or change your mind about something and turn around and go the other way. So, you know, this could represent repenting. Okay, 180. You know, do a 180. Oh, he did a 180. You know that saying? Okay. So in 1 Kings 11, 15 to 17, it said, For it came to pass when David was in Edom, Edom and Jaob, the captain of the host, was gone up to bury the slain. After he had smitten every male of Edom, for six months did Jahab remain there with all of Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. Okay, so... I mean, when you read about this, when David was in this Edom, basically he had a command from God to get rid of all the, this, this tribe, this lineage, okay? And he was there for six months doing it. And think about this. In Revelation 9, it talks about the scorpions stinging men, and the men are begging to die, but death is going to flee for them. That happens for 150 days, five months. So is, is the, the great tribulation of the left behind saints, is that for like a month, you know, a month, um, and then there's five months remaining out of those six months, you know, where, where Revelation 9 can happen and the scorpions are stinging people, you know, for, for five months. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and Luke 4.25 I tell you of a truth, many win widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, when the great famine was throughout the land. So that's just what it's talking about. And that James just repeats that. Um, and here's my little study where I was looking into different uh, rapture videos and stuff like this. This rapture video was called The Signs for a Coming Rapture Plus My 2015 Vision of China Invading Taiwan. Um, no. Okay, I don't know how to do that. But anyway, so basically, because I, I watched them all, this is the reason why I copied and pasted them here. But this is a lady, Barbara Walters, I think. Barbara Walters is her name. And long story short, basically she's sitting at a computer, was doing funny things and it kept closing down, whatever. And so she would close the computer down and reboot it back up and it would come up with this like um, sort of um, red, blue, orange, you know, like when a TV is going out of the color thing. It just there's a bunch of colors when the when the um the color card is about to break in a tv anyway so she's seen the words come up on her screen saying jesus jesus comes soon 
uh, Jesus comes and then on the uh, bottom left hand screen it said uh, China invades Taiwan so it had on the right side it said Jesus comes the bottom it said China invades Taiwan and this happened to her three times and then it never happened again and she didn't realize that it was more than likely a vision that she was having and this was in 2015 when that China invading Taiwan was not a thing back then so um, many people know about this vision right I'm pretty sure her name was uh, um, what did I say Barbara Walters I don't know did I say that right anyway this link is here if you wanted to um, pause it and have a look okay uh, another one here Strong's uh, 2015 glorious appearing the rapture this was from Mark Allison 88 okay and this is very interesting um, it's a game a game on um, what do you call it actually we will watch this one because this was the gameplay and the cutscene was extremely interesting because it's exactly what's happening now. Um, copy, and we're gonna paste, and we're gonna go to this one. So we'll just watch a little bit of this. So, so this is the um, the name of the video. Everybody's gone to the rapture. Public service announcement for the PS4. Okay, it's a game. This is a message from the Haverton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. If you or a loved one begins feeling symptoms of influenza or any other form of illness, it is vital that you remember the following acronym. C-P-R. Check, protect, report. Again, check, protect, report. Check. In the wake of recent influenza outbreaks and sudden disappearances, symptom check... In the wake of influenza outbreaks and sudden disappearances, um, okay. Lists have been provided to local hospitals, doctors, and churches. If you or a loved one begins to feel flu-like symptoms, it is encouraged that you reach out to these groups to check your symptoms against the following list. Headaches, fatigue, temporary loss of sight and hearing, Severe bleeding from the nose and ears. Please also check to ensure that all family members are accounted for at all times. Protect. Should you or a loved one determine that your symptoms match that of the posted checklist, it is imperative that you take steps to protect the public from contagion. <laughs> the first step is to isolate the sick individual. All sick persons must remain indoors with windows and doors closed to prevent the possibility of spreading an airborne illness. Contact with sick persons should be limited until symptoms subside. If interaction is unavoidable, be sure to cover your mouth and nose with a cloth or surgical mask. Doesn't this look familiar and sound familiar, brothers and sisters? Okay, this is 2015, this game. And they're talking about an influenza outbreak, okay, and wearing masks and, um, you know, isolating yourself. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Predictive programming, they have to tell us what they're going to do. Um, it's part of their, their law, okay, that they have to abide by. And limit exposure to no more than a few minutes. Be sure to carefully wash all exposed extremities before interacting with others. Remember... It is all of our responsibility to prevent the spread of influenza. Report. 
report. Local authorities have been notified by the District Emergency Measures Committee that all cases of illness must be documented and reported. Yeah, I bet. If you or a loved one encounter a sick individual or become sick yourselves, you are required by law to notify your local authorities. This, the same thing has happened in history, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, during the, the Nazi Holocaust and stuff like that. The same thing happened. The, the, propaganda, the propaganda that they had was dobbing your neighbours, um, you know, and you'll be rewarded. And, you know, it's by law that you have to do these things. This is why it says in the scriptures that parents will betray children, children, parents, they'll even put them to death, okay, because it's by the law. This is why you need to know and have Yeshua Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour in your heart, okay, and you have to know that he's Father the one who created you, okay, and you're set, you're good to go, okay, but brothers and sisters, this is why it is so important, we're coming up to this last final moments now, where if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Saviour, that door, probation, is about to close, and this is terrifying, you do not want to be here on the other side of this, it's, you know, you think it's hard now to be a Christian, you know, you think it's hard now having to wait and be faithful and everything like that. You wait until the time of trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of history that has never been as bad as it ever will, never will again. Like, you know what I'm saying? The disappearance of any person for greater than 24 hours should also be reported. The disappearance of any person must be reported. Ah, oh, this is amazing. Just like the Ken Peters prophecy, right? Where he's, he said, um, you know, everybody was, where did these people go? Where did these people go? It's, it's going to happen, brothers and sisters. If, you, if you're one of these people who do not believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, and look, when we say pre-tribulation, we're not saying that we're not going to go through any tribulation because that's not true. We've been through it. We have been going through it. It's been a test and it legitimately started in 2020 okay that was the test okay just because we're not getting a gun put to our head doesn't mean we're not in the tribulation this is the final tribulation of the sorting out of the wheat and the tares okay this is the test of faith those that seek to save their life okay they're going to lose it those that are willing to give up their life and give up their jobs give up everything to stand firm on the word of god you know, they're the ones that are going to inherit the kingdom alongside with um, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Father, God's son. So, um, you know, this is all that Satan knows this is for real. And I've heard many times that the people in the Illuminati, you know, Satan's minions, whatever, they're terrified of this day. They want it to come because they're going to have the rule and reign. But once this day comes, then they're on a time clock. And it's going to tick down and they've only got 30 uh, 42 months you know what i mean they're looking forward to this day because um you know how i've said that that trump he is more than likely the man of sin who will go into the son of perdition have a look at him there's no one else in the world brothers and sisters i know there's a lot of focus on um king charles at the moment whatever and yeah he may be of the antichrist spirit absolutely there's more than one but the man of sin, okay, has to be somebody that the whole world will wander after. If Prince Charles died, whatever, and was resurrected, the whole world wouldn't wander after him. They'd go, wow, that's cool, whatever. But we've, we've been so um, desensitized to everything that it wouldn't, it would just be a fad and be over and done with, right? But if Trump, on the other hand, who is almost worshipped by a lot of evangelical Christians, and don't tell me he's not, because he is almost worshipped, brothers and sisters. He is held up on a pedestal like the saviour of the world. And this is why they allowed Biden to come in, is to destroy America, so that the people who even hated Trump will now call for him because he seems like the only person that's been telling you for the last three years um, you know America's going to hell and I'm the only one that can fix it so what does people you know they've been predictive programmed to that they're going to turn straight to this man and you know he's going to fix the world he's going to be the savior of the world and the whole world will wander after him 
And so I believe very much that when Michael stands up, has a war in heaven, casts Satan down with a deadly head blow from Michael's sword right on Satan's head. Satan's going to be cast down with his angels onto this earth. And Satan is going to enter into the man of sin, Trump. Okay, turning him into the son of perdition. Right now, he's just the man of sin. And we have to know this and have to be able to see this to warn our other brothers and sisters and those people of the world. Okay, so that when we're gone, they will know and have heard this already. Okay, and because Satan was cast down with a deadly head blow, that is when he goes into the man of sin, Trump, Trump will also receive that deadly head blow. And this is how he's going to be resurrected because he's going to receive that deadly head blow and then be resurrected in front of the whole world. This is exactly why the whole world will wander after the beast. Okay? Trump fits the, perf the, the objective perfectly. You have a look in uh, Daniel 11. It talks about um, this man has to be a stout man. That's exactly what Trump is. And he has to do things that his father never did. Trump not goes on his own on his own rules and his own whatever, okay? Um, and, um, you know, and when he was in power, he went around to all the countries, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Israel, wherever, all the countries, and he shook hands with them and made deals. You've seen it. It was plastered all over the media, right? Everybody loved him. Everybody. All the Middle Eastern countries, everybody bowed down to this man. Russia, whatever. You know why? Because he is the man of sin. He went around giving them the promise of their hour of power. He says, when I rule and reign, you're going to have the hour of power with me. Okay? And they all made the agreement on it. This is exactly what it says in the scriptures and it will play out. So, anyway, um, so that's everybody's gone in the rapture. That's a game. And then um, I had a look at the year 2015. So I put that into Strong's and guess what it means? The glorious appearing the glorious appearing brothers and sisters now if like from my yesterday's video if that's legit and 100 percent correct that we truly are in the year 2015 like i said there's so many things then the you know strong's concordance 2015 is glorious appearing the epiphany okay epiphany it's the epiphany brothers <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord this is awesome okay the glorious appearing and this is just a rapture dream that this lady had basically um basically she was she said she was standing there she was holding an ipad or something like that and she was looking at it, she said the world and it was spinning around and then she, she saw it in real time right and then this big cloud that was over the um pardon me, over the world. And then she said to her husband, look at this. And as soon as she said, look at this, she just went whoosh and got sucked up. And she said it was the most wonderful feeling ever. And um, anyway, you know, people have had wonderful, wonderful. Um, and then there's this thing. I don't know if this is called the rapture. It's a trailer that was done in 2015. This was super weird. I won't play it because it's a bit of a horror thing, but it seems to be um, a movie that was done in Australia because it, it seemed to have Australian actors in it and stuff like this and look like sort of a, um, a B-grade horror movie, you know, like somebody's with their own camera just did it. But basically it was the same thing. She was immune to this pandemic or whatever, and she held the key, and all these people were missing because they went in the rapture, and and um, and this signs pointing to May uh, rapture in the two thousand and fifteen in Pentecost. This was done in two thousand fifteen, and then um, I did this, and then. I finally came across this last video, like I said, just as I was going to bed, about September 23, 2015. 
and that flooded my memory back to you know this is the beginning of my journey this was my first high watch date which I would have given my life for you know this is really what separated me from the world this this um first the revealing of the rapture that it was a real thing and I've never heard this thing before and the second that that everything that pointed to this was amazing and people had been pointing at this day for years not just for a month or that year for years they were talking about this day and um yeah so what I did was do the 23rd I did a day count this is really cool okay I'm gonna end and with a bang <laughs> oh, are you ready for this the 23rd of September 2015 okay where my journey started to the 21st of May 2023 which I believe is the 17th of Nissan resurrection day how many days is that it's uh, 2797 days seven years seven months 28 days okay look what Strong's 2797 is dun 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 a snare <laughs> for as a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell upon the face of the whole earth a snare can you believe this brothers and sisters oh. I mean if this isn't the date at least we've had a good time and it just you know it fills our heart with joy to do this well it does mine anyway like <laughs> this is so cool this is so absolutely cool so you know who knows the 21st of May 2023 we are 11 days off 11 days off and that seems to be the Julian calendar I think they're 11 days off too so who knows who knows who knows but I just thought that was amazing from uh, 23rd of September 2015 to the 21st of May 2023 2797 days which means a snare so that's my video for today it's all about Pyram it started on Pyram it's ending on Pyram and we are there to wait patiently uh, for the last test of the 75 days okay hold on brothers and sisters this is our blessed hope this is our blessed hope we must remain faithful keep that lamps overflowing with oil of love hope trust and faith and belief in the promise the promise is good the promise is sure and um, I hope this video blessed you as much as it blessed me doing it last night in my studies I have got one hour now before I have to go and pick up my kiddos from school so I better go and prepare dinner and get that all sorted and um, get that done but I, I really just wanted to get this video done for you guys and I hope it blesses you I love you so much and if I do not see you in the next video I will definitely see you in the skies God bless you I love you bye bye